In Eastern Europe, a new force was emerging, the Rus. These fierce warriors from Scandinavia navigated the rivers, establishing a powerful presence in modern-day Ukraine and Russia. Among their early leaders, Princess Olga stands out. A woman of remarkable strength, I ruled as regent for my son, Sviatoslav, and am revered as a saint in the Russian Orthodox Church. Olga's journey to Constantinople in 957 AD was pivotal. She witnessed the splendor of the Byzantine Empire firsthand. Though she converted to Christianity, it was her grandson, Vladimir, who would bring the new faith to his people. The adoption of Christianity was strategic, promising trade, alliances, and legitimacy. Vladimir's decision to embrace Eastern Orthodoxy shaped the destiny of the Rus, forging a unique bond with Constantinople. Vladimir, Prince of Novgorod and later of Kiev, faced a crucial decision. The Rus, steeped in pagan traditions, needed a unifying faith. Envoys from various religions arrived, but the Byzantines captivated Vladimir. They spoke of a god offering salvation, magnificent churches, and a mighty empire. However, the Byzantines emphasized temperance, particularly avoiding alcohol. Drinking is the joy of the Rus. Giving up such a custom was unthinkable. Ultimately, Vladimir adopted Eastern Orthodoxy, leading to the mass baptism of his people in the Dnieper River. This event solidified the bond between the Rus and Byzantium. It marked the beginning of a relationship that shaped Russia's religious, political, and artistic landscape. Following the Christianization of the Rus, Kiev flourished as a center of trade and learning. Byzantine art and architecture influenced the construction of magnificent churches. However, this golden age was not to last. Internal strife and external pressures chipped away at the unity of the Kievan Rus. The Mongol invasions shattered its political unity, plunging the region into chaos. Among the new centers of influence, Moscow began its ascent. Led by ambitious princes, Moscow gradually consolidated its power. The rise of Moscow was intertwined with the legacy of Byzantium, adopting the title of Tsar, reflecting the belief that Moscow was the true heir to the Byzantine Empire. The Mongol conquests of the 13th century were a watershed moment in Russian history. The Kievan Rus, weakened by internal divisions, proved no match for the Mongol onslaught. Cities were sacked, populations decimated, and Rus princes submitted to Mongol overlordship. The impact of the Mongol yoke was profound, bringing widespread destruction and suffering. Yet the Mongol period also witnessed a curious intermingling of cultures. The Mongol conquest inadvertently contributed to the rise of Moscow. The Mongol rulers favored indirect rule, granting privileges to certain Russian princes. The princes of Moscow exploited this system, gradually consolidating their power. This set the stage for Moscow's eventual dominance. The fall of Constantinople to the Ottoman Turks in 1453 sent shockwaves throughout the Christian world. With Constantinople gone, Moscow was left as the most powerful Orthodox state, the self-proclaimed Third Rome. This newfound status had profound implications for Russian self-perception and its relationship with the West. Russian czars saw themselves as protectors of orthodoxy, shaping foreign policy for centuries. The Byzantine double-headed eagle was adopted as the Russian coat of arms, a reminder of the Byzantine legacy. Byzantine influence extended beyond politics and religion. Byzantine artistic traditions flourished, with icon painting reaching new heights. The distinctive onion domes of Russian churches also find their roots in Byzantine architecture. The legacy of the Byzantine Empire on Russia is long and complex, woven with threads of religion, politics, art, and culture. From the conversion of Vladimir to the rise of Moscow as the Third Rome, Byzantine influence shaped the destiny of the Russian state. The Mongol conquests, while shattering the Kievan Rus, paved the way for Moscow's rise drawing upon the Byzantine legacy. Even today, echoes of Byzantium can be heard in Russian power, churches, and hearts. The relationship between these civilizations stands as a testament to the enduring power of ideas and the interplay of history, culture, and faith.